So now in this video, we have an op amp here, wired as a voltage follower. We've been making uh, circuits recently with uh, bipolar junction transistors that were a form of voltage uh, followers. Not as good as the op amp though at these lower currents there. So you can see the LED gets brighter as I turn the trim pot closer to the positive supply. We have the uh, power supply set to 9 volts. I got 9 volts written on my schematic right there for powering the op amp, which you don't always see the uh, supply voltage across the op amp when you look at the schematic, but you always have to power it, the actual component. Um, but we got 9 volts there across the uh, trim pot. Uh, that's a maximum. We can go to about uh, 4.5 volts right there total. And when we get down to about 1.5 volts, the LED will turn off completely. You can see we got a little wiggle room right there for the LED uh, for voltage. But ultimately, the voltage we set at the non-inverting input there will be the voltage at the output. Thanks to the direct feedback of the output to the inverting input. So now, zooming in on the diagram I put together, I did put the pin layout here, so there's two op amps on the physical component, the LM358. We're gonna use one out of uh, two of them. And uh, so we're gonna use the one on the left side. You do have to power the integrated circuit. Again, remember, you do that whether or not you see it on the schematic, sometimes to uh, reduce clutter. They don't show it on the schematic, but there you can see pin eight, positive supply, Pin 4, negative supply there, since we're just using a single supply. We have a positive and a negative. Our ground is not in between the uh, most positive and negative voltage, uh, so ground. Uh, but we could uh, use a split uh, supply if we wanted to. If you're not sure what that means, you know, look that up later. Not going to go great detail on that. So usually I use red for positive supply, but I got blue here. Um, so in any case, we're just going to use the op amp on the left side there. Pin layout's the same there, except for it's uh, shifted down one spot compared to this one because of where the supply is. So uh, the uh, main pin is the non-inverting input right here. So we have the trim pot there. It's a 10,000 ohm trim pot. Uh, value doesn't matter, um, but if you go too low in value, you'll waste a lot of current uh, in flowing through. Current does not go in or out of the input there. It just looks at the voltage, although a tiny bit will trickle through. Um, but uh, not enough to consider it any amount of current flow. Basically, there's no current flow. And uh, so what the output does is if the voltage here is higher than the inverting input, then the output voltage will rise. And it'll keep rising forever if they don't uh, equalize, you know, up to its output that it can provide. Uh, the voltage will go as high as it can and then stop. Um, but since we have this negative feedback here, it's called negative feedback because it's going to the inverted input there with the uh, negative uh, symbol there. Once this voltage is the same as that one at the non-inverting input, then the voltage holds steady at the output. And uh, so it will rise, if we rise the voltage there, it will rise here until they are the same. And it goes pretty much instantly there. Same when we lower it. So if we lower the voltage here, as long as that one's higher, the output voltage will also drop. Um, but once they're equal, then it will hold steady. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, so the reason why we would not use a trim pot directly with the LEDs, because we're setting a voltage here, is this does need a lot of current. When you're considering a 10,000 ohm resistor there, if you go all the way to negative supply, um, but like halfway even, that's 5,000 ohms of resistance it would have to go through, and then go through the LED. LED is not going to be very bright. It's not even going to be... Uh, you know, 4.5 volts at this point. Uh, since this draws current, it's going to pull it down. So this is an amplifier, uh, but it's just taking the voltage and amplifying the current that the voltage can provide compared to the signal source right there. So we'll come back over here, and uh, we got the non-inverting input plus the inverting input there negative. So that's our direct feedback. When it comes to the LED, that's the long lead, the anode, short lead, the cathode is up there going to the resistor. So I have this turned a different way than I normally do. There you can see long lead lower. Um, that's because if I put it in that way, it's backwards and it will not light up, of course. You have to put it in the right way. So I always pay a close attention to uh, which side the anode is. That's gotta be more positive. And where the cathode is, that has to be more negative. And now I have the uh, multimeter here. I turned the uh, lamp brighter. So the LED is going to look a little bit uh, dimmer. And um, so we're going to measure voltage. I just clipped the alligator clips that I clamp jumpers to. 
and uh, we can look at the voltage right now it should be about 4.5 approximately right there and uh, so we got to go to the output right there and uh, there it should be almost exactly the same right there may even be exactly the same I don't know I wasn't uh, uh, really looking so now we're gonna go to uh, zero and uh, there we go we actually got zero sometimes there's a little residual resistance holds it uh, slightly higher so the output should be a uh, zero right there you know maybe just a spec different uh, but we got uh, zero let's try to get the LED to just start uh, slightly glowing that'll probably be about 1.5 right there and uh, looks like maybe I gotta go a little bit higher okay yeah we got a slight glow like 1.58 1.6 there and uh, we should have the same voltage so now as I said before I'll uh, leave it at the uh, trim pot the uh, output of this particular one does not go to the full supply voltage uh, so we're getting it says 8.8 .8. um, and even op amps that can get to the full supply voltage usually don't do it when they are powering a load like this so there you can see we're following following falling at least one and a half volts away from the positive rail there looks like we're doing a little a bit worse so it's going to kind of hold that until i drop this i'll uh, i'll try to get this up to like seven volts um but yeah i have to lower the trim pot voltage to below what the uh, maximum output of the output uh was so we can't get nine volts out even though we can set uh nine volts at the trim pot we're, we're stopped somewhere about seven volts there even though i can set the trim pot higher than that it's not going to out uh, put that so that's one reason why uh, even if you're using an op amp as a voltage follower you might be using that to uh, send to a bipolar junction transistor wired as a follower to uh, transfer the voltage again although it might be 0.6 volts off but there's ways to uh, get rid of that and um, so it's still important to learn the uh, bipolar junction transistor follower circuits because these op amps I think the maximum output is 20 milliamps I believe so you can light an LED but higher power loads you'll have to add a transistor of some kind anyways uh, make sure you turn the uh, power off when you're done I think that's it for this video hope you enjoyed make sure you check out one of the other videos I'm posting the screen and check out the links down below they all help out a lot I'll see you in the next video